Hello everybody, it's me, Hugo. I'm just letting you guys know that this is going to be a two-parter because this game was also very long. Um, and I encourage you to watch both parts. Uh, this one gets into some real deep stuff, and then we'll move on to the testing chamber as well afterwards. Just wanted to let you guys know. Enjoy the video. Do I look like I just escaped prison? Out of Alcatraz? Hello everybody, my name is Hugo Griffin, and welcome to the third installment of the test, Final Revelation. Um, this is the final of the trilogy, and then I play the testing chamber. And then we will see where that goes. Also, if you're wondering why I look like I just escaped Alcatraz, that's because I'm wearing an Alcatraz uniform. Why? I don't know, but we will figure that out as we play. Maybe. Hi, Goober. Welcome to the party, bro. Let's get into it. Hopefully this music is not too loud. It's really loud to me. But I turned it down so that hopefully you guys are able to hear me perfectly well. It looked like my volumes were balanced well enough, so let's see. For experience in the test final revelation, it is highly recommended that you've played the prequels. The test and the test hypothesis rising before venturing. Yes, I have. You'll stand again a lot more from this experience. Yeah, it's the same thing. Same thing as last time. I urge you to go play the test. Blah, blah, blah. Would you like to close the game? No, I already played them. Well then, let's continue. Cool. Please make sure that you answer each question with the utmost honesty, that you take your time to answer the questions presented. Even answering one question improperly may drastically change your outcome. You, make, you, you cannot go back to can answer questions you misanswered. So be sure to take your time. This is of utmost importance. Well, are you guys directly calling me out? Because you guys made escape the select button for some reason? Guys, shush! When the sun comes crashing down and the heroes fade away. When darkness is all around and there is no light of day. It will come back for you. So that you never feel alone. My spirit will push through. Your heart will forever be my home. And when the world spirals into abyss, I will be standing there, your embrace so long I've missed. My soul, my love, I bear. And when every nerve has been left dead, deadened, and every ghost has left its shell, I will bring you back to your heaven, as you've rescued me from my hell. What a nice poem. How sweet. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I wanna get into it. Oh? No matter what happens, I will always love you. Whoa. Cute. But this man's mine. Lay off my man. He's a handsome man. Choice. Do you promise? I should voice them a bit better. With every ounce of my heart, and each droplet of my soul, I swear to you. We are going to find a way out of here. So they're in prison now? Interesting. I didn't get to voice choice again. Yeah, sure, do goose doing it. Oh! Oh, we're back in the same room as the last game. Cool. Wow, you look cool! Hmm. I wasn't expecting you so soon. Though I knew that one day we would meet in this room. You see, closely, I've been watching you. Studying every breath and every move. A few of my former colleagues you may have met. And a slew of questions you've answered without regret. I may be similar, but unlike them still. I'll make you swallow the truth like a bitter pill. Are you rhyming, dude? You dropping bars. Bars. I will peel the emotion from your soul. Wow, I'm not an orange, my guy. And make you eat your feelings whole. Sounds a little gay. The questions I ask may be hard to answer. But I will cut the truth from you like a cancer. 
Okay. So you're gonna save my life? Cool. Both of us know why you're here. To open up and cast out fear. To be as honest as you can. To take angels' wings or devil's hands. And in the end, we both will know how to escape your undertow. Time is on your side, but mistakes are not. Misanswered questions lead to misery rot. Take time to think before you decide. Dig deep for the answers that live inside. You may not go back, you may not return. Once a decision is made into your soul, tis burned. But before we continue, just know this. Your dishonesty would be very remiss. If your answers lack the guidance of truth, then your final destination will be rather uncouth. So with that being said, I need your heart's honesty. You can run from yourself, but you can't run from me. Wow. Nice. Now, let the examination begin. For the actual questions, I will just read them out in my normal voice. Because... Doing that voice, it, I, I won't be able to record a second video today if I do that. Uh, through the whole thing. Do you ever feel like you just aren't good enough? Sure. On, on occasion, sure. Do you ever feel like you put more effort into friends or relationships than others put back into you? I feel I do. From time to time, I think I do. Do you ever feel like your life is going nowhere? On occasion, yes. Do you ever feel like you're trapped in limbo? No. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by seemingly trivial tasks? Yeah. Are you sometimes afraid of what your future may hold? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you believe that your friends always treat you the way you deserve to be treated? I think so. Are you afraid of being the last person alive in your social circle? I'm not afraid of it, no. Are you afraid of the existence of an afterlife, or what that might mean for you? No. I live my life the best I can, so I think I'm going to a good place. Do you feel as though you're wanted in life? Yes. Yes. Do you ever feel like you just don't belong? I used to, but not anymore, so no. Do you ever feel like a burden? On occasion, yes. Have you ever felt left out? Man, all these questions that you're asking are very, very, very... Personal, Destiny! Have you ever felt left out? Yes. These are very heavy questions. Have you ever felt like a failure? Yes. Have you ever felt like you just weren't attractive enough? Yes, but not anymore, really. But you asked, have you ever? Have you ever worked yourself sick? Yes, I have. One time I went to work sick because I was like, I just have to keep working, I just have to keep working, and then I died the next day. But I'm back, so I, I didn't fully die, so it's cool. Do you ever have racing thoughts at night that make it difficult for you to get to sleep? Yes. I've got ADD. Are you afraid to ask for help? Yes. It often is difficult for me to do. Do you feel like people often criticize you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel judged by your friends or family? On occasion, yes. Do you ever wonder what your purpose is in life? Yeah. I think Destiny's trying to kill me. <laughs> <coughs> if you could turn back time for any reason, would you? Yeah, probably would. Would you say that you have many regrets in life? No. No, I don't think so. Does meeting new people for the first time make you uncomfortable? No, not at all. Does looking out your window at night make you feel uneasy? No. 
No. Despite me, that being really reminiscent of when I had a stalker and looking out the window and seeing that guy's figure just in the in like the street or something, I still, it doesn't make me uneasy. Do you sometimes double check that your doors are locked, even though you're certain that you've already locked them? Yes, I think everyone has at one point. Do you ever feel like life is moving too slow? Recently, no. Life moves very fast. And kids, once you get older, you'll experience it. And boy, oh boy, you're not ready for it. <laughs> I'm still not. Do you ever feel like life is moving too fast? Oh, sorry, yes. Do you feel uncomfortable when you're home alone? No. Would you consider yourself to be a thoughtful person? Yes. Would you consider yourself to be superficial? What does that mean? Superficial. One second, please. No. Do you ever judge others by the way they look or dress? No. Would you consider yourself to be high maintenance? No. Have you ever been bullied by someone you cared about? Yes. Have you ever been bullied by some, or have you ever been bullied, a bully to someone you care about? No. Do you try to keep a low profile to avoid attention from others while in a crowded area? No. I'm a weird guy, I, I typically draw attention to myself. Do you actively try to avoid busy places? No. Would you sometimes rather be alone than sur uh, surrounded by people you care about? Sometimes, yes. Does making phone calls make you feel uncomfortable? Yes. By God, I hate making phone calls. Are you sometimes afraid to confront people, even when they do something that bothers you? No, not anymore. Do you feel uncomfortable when committing to uh, definitive plans? For the future. Yes, on occasion. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's my dog tearing up a toy. Do you feel like no matter how hard you try, you you just can't seem to stay motivated? On occasion, yes. For these videos, I've, I've been more motivated than ever, so I'm doing very well with these. Do you ever feel like you're fa failing those who care about you most? Man, these questions are so heavy. Destiny. Baby. Chill out, dude! You ever feel like you're failing those who care about you most? Yeah. Does driving a vehicle give you anxiety? No. Are you afraid of exploring new places by yourself? No, not at all. I explore abandoned buildings all the time. Have you ever carried an object around with you that made you feel more un more comfortable? What? Oh. Yeah? If I told you that I could guess your name correctly right now, would you believe me? No. But I'd like to see you try. Hmm. Hmm. Well, are you gonna do it? Well, based on your answers you've provided me so far. If I were to take a guess... I would say your name starts with the letter M, doesn't it? No. It does not. No. No. That makes sense. Let's be real here, it's literally no way I'd be able to guess your name just by your answers. That would be ridiculous. I agree. See? You don't know. Besides, all of you humans look alike to me anyway. What, are you saying you're not human? I mean, you could pass off as human. Does being around animals bring you a sense of peace? Yes. You sometimes believed your loved ones are lying to you when they say that they care. On occasion, yes. You ever feel like you pushed your loved ones away? Yes, I used to. I'm sure if I had the opportunity again, I wouldn't. Hmm. I'm going to have to stop you here. The truth that pours pours forth is incredibly clear. I hope that you're being honest for your own health. You can't, you can try to lie, but you'll be cheating yourself.
I'd like to move on to the next phase of the test. Let's do it. A series of pictures to give your brain a rest. You're going to tell me what emotional response they bring out. Which will show me what your mind is pondering about. So feast your eyes upon the art. And let me into your precious heart. For starters. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? I'll do it for these questions because they seem a bit more... You know, whatever. Um, I feel relaxed, actually, looking at this. What word do you feel describes the picture best? Beautiful. What do you think this picture is called? Celestial Stare sounds awesome. Very interesting. Moving on. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Once again, it makes me relaxed. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Stuck, abyss, toxic, demented, life, exotic. What do you think this picture is called? Eruption wave, the birthing, blazing soul, destroyer of sense, or darkness within. Blazing soul seems right. I see. Next, we have this one. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Again, relaxed. This, I love this. All these pictures are super nice. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Glorious twin, mirrored, space... It did remind me of space almost immediately. Galactic planets. Space... What do you think this picture is called? Reflection of the universe. Noted. Take a look at this one. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Weirdly, I am feeling a bit sad looking at it. That's strange. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Gateway, staircase, heavenly, unknown. What do you think this picture is called? Light at the end of the tunnel, maybe? That's peculiar. And how about this one? What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Joy. What word do you feel describes this picture best? I ring, abyssal, darkness, lightning, blazing. Abyssal. What do you think this picture is called? Well, I know I picked Abyssal, but Shrouded Misery seems right. I will make note of that. Goober, please, for the love of Christ, all things are holy. Yeehaw! And this here, what emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? I feel numb. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Mask, Veiled, Cyclops, Jungle, Prismatic. Prismatic seems about right. What do you think this picture is called? Mind's Eye, Force Dip, The Masking, Eye of Chaos, The Shining Light seems about right. I don't know, that I'm not getting anything from this picture. I see. Now this one. What emotion do you feel is presence in this picture? That is awesome! Wow, Joy. I really like that. That's so cool. What word do you feel best describes this picture? Feathers, heaven, bosoms, collide, planetary. What do you think this picture is called? Forming Earth sounds awesome. Hmm. How about this? What emotion do you feel is present in this picture? This feels like chaos. 
What word do you feel describes this picture best? Brimstone. What do you think this picture is called? The world breaks. That's interesting that you say that. How about this one here? Ooh, what emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Num. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Cyborg information, analyzing, monitoring, futuristic. What do you think this picture is called? Datasphere, thought provoke, incubation of dreams, matrix watcher, life projector. The Datasphere. Yeah, I will make note of that. Now this one. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Weirdly, depression. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Destiny. What do you think this picture is called? Monolith Heart. Interesting. Take a look at this. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Chaos. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Anarchy. What do you think this picture is called? The Crystal Verse. Huh. We're almost done. What emotion do you feel is present in this picture? Relaxation. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Viscous. What do you think this picture is called? The Sludge. Interesting choice. Let's see here. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Depression? What word do you feel describes this picture best? Whoa, what are you doing? Get out of here! Get the fuck- Get out of here! The fuck is that? Get out! The hell was that? Crown Sword Laser Sunlight Eclipse Solstice. Crown. What do you think this picture is called? Red Angel. Alright then. Just a few more. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Hmm, numbness. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Beauty. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Beauty came first. What do you think this picture is called? Formless being. That's surprising. Is it now? Almost finished. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Relaxation. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Gaseous, chaos, warped, wave, nebula. What do you think this picture is called? Soulless space, leaves up closed, verdant path, life breaking, vaporous forms. Soulless space. Very good. Last one. Alright, let's get to it. What emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Chaos. What word do you feel describes this picture best? Weirdly music. What do you think this picture is called? Sound of silence. Yeah, that sounds right. I think that about wraps it up. Alright? Your answers have been documented well. Deep into your subconscious they dwell. 
but I am not finished with you just yet. There are still some truths that have yet to be met. As a matter of fact, this is only the start. We will have a great deal of fun before we part. So let me challenge you on another level still. I will pick your brain until I get my fill. The next set of questions will test your conscience more. And again, your honesty, I do implore. Let us begin. <clears throat> One year, you're running low on funds to purchase presents around the holidays. So you decide to spend one dollar and get everyone in your family a lottery ticket. You give each of them their own lottery ticket and wish them the best of luck. The drawing is held and one of your family members hits the jackpot. But it's someone who you don't really get along with and just bought a present for out of moral obligation. They plan to keep the money all for themselves as they feel like it was their tickets. How does this make you feel? I'd feel happy for them, probably. Very well. And what would you wish to do in this situation? Oh my. These are some... Let them be happy with their winnings. I would hope that they would at some point be like, Wow, thanks, or something like that. If the roles were the best, and you were given the winning lottery ticket, would you share the money with the, your least favorite family member who bought you the ticket in the first place? Yes, I would. I see. Because it wouldn't have happened if they hadn't have bought it. Now you're walking through a forest, and you come along a black suitcase. Inside the case, there rest one million dollars. Alongside the money, there lies a blood-stained note with only one word written on it. The note simply says, Don't. How does this make you feel? Hmm, scared there's blood in there. Anxious, what if someone comes for, for the money? Excited, I'm about to be rich. Indifferent, none of my business. If I saw that, I'd leave it alone, frankly. That's dirty money right there. Or I'd turn it into the police. And what would you wish to do in this situation? Call the police and let them know about the suitcase, yes. If the note wasn't covered in blood, would it change your decision at all? Probably? Interesting. The devil appears in your room at night while you're alone, and just about to fall asleep and tells you that he has a special, one-time offer for you. In exchange for your soul and eternal damnation, he will let you choose from one of the three glorious bargains. He has not told you what the bargains are yet. How does this make you feel? Intrigued, actually. The devil then goes on to assure you that whatever or not you believe him to truly be the devil, he surely is. And to prove his point, he demonstrates magnificent magical prowess and drags you to hell for a split second before transporting you back to your bedroom. In that second, you could feel a lifetime of pain and suffering in the most unimaginable ways possible. He then goes on to tell you of his offers in exchange for your soul to see if you can strike a bargain. Which of these would you choose in exchange for your soul, if any? All the wealth and power in the world, you'll never age, but you can still die from physical injury. You can bring one person back from the dead. I don't think I would take any of those. If the devil offered you a deal of some other kind, would you accept it in exchange for eternal damnation? Probably not. I would... I would try to beat the devil at his own game. I see. Civilization is about to come to an end as a plague sweeps the globe, turning everyone who perishes into mindless zombies who hunger for living flesh. 
You watch as everyone you know becomes gravely ill in turns, except for five of your closest friends and family. How does this make you feel? I'd feel indifferent. If you knew that the zombie apocalypse was coming in ten years from now, and you could prevent it from happening, would you? Probably would. I know in the last one I said I'd press the button to end all life on Earth, but... Nobody deserves to be a husk. If I could just end all life on Earth with the press of a button, and nobody has to suffer, I would do that. But for everyone to suffer for ever, that's something I do not want. Interesting. You've been working at a company for 10 years, and you've been promised a very important and incredibly lucrative promotion. However, someone hired only a number of weeks ago has just been promoted to the position that you were promised. Your boss essentially tells you tough luck and that maybe one day you'll get the position and that he had to promote the other employee as a favor for a friend. How does this make you feel? Betrayed? I would feel a betrayed. You've also learned a few secrets about the company that could be disastrous if they were to escape. Such as the fact that they haven't been properly reporting their income for the last decade. Ooh. What do you wish to do in this situation? Hmm. It would depend on the promotion. Because if that promotion was really good and I was promised that, and I felt that betrayed by it, I probably would threaten to report him. But normally, I would just quit the job and look for a new employment. But if I had the chance, I probably would report criminal behavior. That's not, that's okay. So reporting it sounds like I like threatening to report it. That sounds like I'm trying to blackmail them, but it's not. It it's it doesn't say threatening to report them for the promotion. Like if you don't give me the promotion, I will report you for fraud. It's just saying threatening to report them. So, it's not wrong. Plus, they're doing criminal acts. If the roles were reversed, and you were hired and promoted as a favor for someone more deserving, would you accept the position? No. No, if they deserved it more, I would give it to them. I'd be like, I can't accept this role. I see. Very interesting. You're home alone at night, cooking food in your kitchen, and you turn around to realize that someone is watching you through your window in the darkness. Scary. They have their face and hands pressed up against the window, and they make direct eye contact with you before turning and running out of sight around the other side of the house. How does this make you feel? I would be protective, probably. And what do you think you'd do in this situation? Lock the doors, call the police, grab the nearest weapon in the house, and prepare myself, check to see if everyone in the house was safe. Run out of the house and go to the neighbors. I would grab the nearest weapon and prepare myself, but then I would call the police. If you, f if the face saw in the window, if the face you saw in the window was the face of a supernatural entity and not of a human being, would your answers change at all? Yes. I'm going to present you with some more potential scenarios, but I'm going to ask you more simplistic answers as a result. Here we go. His voice is hurting my jaw. You're not feeling all too well. <clears throat> so you decide to go to the doctor. The doctor runs a series of tests and gets back to you shortly after and announces some grave news. It turns out that you've contracted an incredibly rare illness that there is currently no cure for. Okay? This illness causes completely complete body paralysis within six months of contraction, meaning that in less than half an hour from now, you will be rendered unable to move, blink, talk, or any form of expression whatsoever. You will need to be kept alive on a feeding tube, and you'll never be able to communicate with anyone else ever again. Just being kept alive on machines in a vegetative state. Would you want to be kept alive in this state, or would you rather have the, pug, the plug pulled when it happens? Pull the plug. I, if I had to sit completely 
forever. I would not do it. How would you like to spend the last six months of your life while still mobile? I would pursue my dreams. There are diseases out there that can put you in the sort of unfortunate situation. Does knowing the, this motivate you to do things you'd never done before and pursue more from life? Or do you feel relatively unaffected by the knowledge that this could potentially happen to you at any point in time? I'd say it motivates me a bit. Noted. Were you going to infect me or something? You have a pet dog whom you've raised since birth. Three years have passed and it's the best dog you've ever had. You love it like it's your own child. And one day, he runs away in the middle of the night, chasing after a wild animal in the darkness. You search everywhere for your dog, but no matter what you do, you cannot seem to make any progress. About a month passes and you still haven't seen a trace of your four-legged companion. Until one morning, you awake to the sound of a familiar barking. You rush outside and find that your elderly neighbor in his late 80s is out in his front lawn joyfully playing with your dog. He is named the Beast Johnny. And him and your dog seem to be having the time of their lives. You rush over there and hug your dog and he excitedly licks your face. Your neighbor says, Johnny's a good boy, isn't he? I lost him when I was just a boy, about your age. But he's come back. Johnny has come back and we're together again. Come to find out, your elderly neighbor is suffering from dementia, recently brought on by the stress and heartache of losing his wife just a couple of months prior to finding your dog. This dementia has caused him to believe that your dog Johnny is his old dog from his childhood, coming back into his life to make him happy and keep him company. The dog seems to be in great shape, very happy and well looked after. And you know that telling the old man that it isn't really his dog, and that it's your dog, would break his heart and crush him. Would you break the news to him that this isn't his dog, and take Johnny home with you? Or would you let him keep the dog, and choose to visit him daily, to play or go for walks? I would let the old man keep him, actually. It's... does this story make you sad at all? A bit, yeah. Can you imagine yourself in the old man's position? Being so alone in life and finding one thing that makes you feel less alone. And potentially having to face it being ripped away from you once again. Ah, I'm gonna stop doing that voice unless he's doing like actual dialogue. Cause it's hurting my jaw. I mean, yes, I can. I can relate. Next question. Let's say that you were viciously murdered by a serial killer and you fell for one of their traps as they lured you in and made you their last victim, or their latest victim. Now let's also say that you're given a unique opportunity in the afterlife as you return as a spirit to roam the earth. However, you are bound to two potential options, and only two. You could either choose to haunt your assailant and make his life miserable, hopefully foiling his plans to kill in the future and potentially save lives in the process. Or you can choose to spend your time as a spirit amongst your still living family and friends, guiding them in positive ways and making their lives better. You are bound to whichever option you choose until either your family or f and friends are no longer living or your killer is no longer living. You cannot choose both. Which one would you choose? I'd go with friends and family, because if I chose to hunt my killer, who knows when he's caught, and plus there's always going to be a serial killer out there. So I would choose to stay with my friends and family. Do you think you have what it takes inside to drive your killer insane and push him over the edge? No, nobody deserves it. Do you believe that this scenario is possible? Sure. If this situation happened to your friend or family member, and they were viciously killed, which situation would you rather them choose? I'd rather them stay with friends and family. Hmm. Next question. One night you go to sleep and get a good a good rest that feels like the best sleep you've ever had. You wake up in an unfamiliar room, in an unfamiliar bed. You look in the mirror, and you hardly recognize yourself. You look as though you've aged 20 years. There's a sticky note on the television screen that says, press play. So you oblige the note and hit the play button to reveal a message that has been left for you and by all of your friends. 
Oh, that voice messed up my jaw. Ah, uh, my family and family that are still alive and well. Though they all seem to be 20 years older as well. Hmm. They explain that every single day, they explain to you that every single day for the last 20 years, you've repeated the same day over and over again. Due to several head injuries, your memory doesn't last more than 24 hours. So each day, when you sleep, all recollection of what took place 24 hours prior is wiped entirely. Wow. <clears throat> your loved ones have made the video to let you have a say in your potential future. Interesting hypothetical. You have the option of either watching this video every single day so you know what's going on and can continue the progress of your life even though you won't have any recollection of it, or you can choose to continue living as you had been, repeating the same day over and over again and living in ignorant bliss. Which would you choose? I'd rather watch the video every day. Would you be upset if your family kept the truth from you for 20 years even though they felt like it was for your own good? No. If they thought it was for my own good, no. If your best friend was in this situation, would you make the video from the, for them telling them the truth? Or would you repeat every day exactly the same for them in order to keep them happy, never letting them know the truth? I'd make the video telling them the truth. Everyone deserves to know the truth. I will take note of your answer. Okay. You've come to find through frantic digging in the attic and reading of old files and newspapers that your parents are famed psychologists. Okay? You've also come to find that they really aren't your parents. Ooh. In fact, they're not even related to you at all. Wow. From what you can gather through your new discoveries, a story tells of a young child who developed psychotic tendencies and went into a trance before murdering their parents in a tragically brutal way. However, that child suffered so much trauma from the event of the loss of their parents once the trance had worn off that they repressed the memory of their parents' death, blocking it completely from their mind. Two psychologists took the child into treatment and performed studies against the, child's no uh, against the child's knowledge, raising that child to be a fully functioning adult while playing the role of the child's real parents to further gather data and potentially help that child avoid a terrible life in the process. You are that child. Would you resent your parents? Probably not. Because they, if they wanted something better for me. Would you be grateful that they gave you a second chance at life? Yes, I would. Because knowing that is terrifying. That you could have... That you killed your parents. It, it's, yeah. Would you feel betrayed by your parents? I kind of would. But I wouldn't resent them for it. Would you confront your parents about the article you found? Yes, I would. If you were in your parents' position, would you do the same for the child in a similar situation? I probably would if I was a psychologist. Interesting. I have one final scenario for you before we move on. The end of the world has come and gone, and all that is left are post-apocalyptic soldiers roaming the lands, combining, uh, combing through towns and laying waste to any survivors in their paths, in hopes to claim their equipment, the equipment for themselves, in order to survive this harsh, barren wasteland known as planet Earth. You get in good with a large colony of soldiers and spend about six months with them before they decide that you're not pulling your weight and in order to save the very few food rations that they have, they exile you from the compound and send you out to fend for yourself. You decide to venture into a neighboring town in hopes of finding food that was left behind by raiders and it only takes you about a day and a half before you strike gold, a hidden underground bunker stop piled with the, to the brim with enough food to feed an entire colony for a year. Now you have a few choices to make. Would you go back to the colony and tell them about the bunker, or would you stay in bunker all by yourself? I would think that they don't deserve it. Because if they're going through neighborhoods, killing off any survivors to steal their food, and these guys are soldiers, I would keep the bunker for, uh, for myself. They don't deserve it. If you could choose to only tell some of the soldiers about the bunker, and let them in so you could lead a new colony 
But exile the soldiers who exiled you. Would you do it? No. If you were to lead a new colony, would you build it based on savagery and raiding? Or would you build it based on sharing and compassion? Sharing and compassion. If you were the leader of the colony that exiled you, except it was you who exiled someone else who wasn't pulling their weight, and that person just so happened to find themselves in a similar situation where they found the jackpot worthy of food in the underground bunker, but they refused to share with you in the colony, would you raid them and steal it for yourself, or would you let them keep what they found? They can keep it. Very interesting. Well, that wraps up this portion of the test. But I need more from you before I allow you to rest. A choice here. A choice there. Which would you rather? No. Go. Get out. No. Get out. No. Get out. More dilemmas are abound from what I can gather. And you will answer clearly, crisp. And concise. I don't like crisp. <laughs> Will you be selfish, or is your conscience a vice? In just mere moments from now, we both shall see. The difference between who you are and who you wish to be. Let us begin. Would you rather abandon the person you love most, or be abandoned by the person you love most? That's a hard one. If I loved them the most, nothing would be the same if they abandoned me. It would have to be for, the re for a specific reason, but I think I would abandon them. Hello everybody, Thank you. thanks again for watching. Uh, if you liked, please leave a like down below. Remember, this is going to be a two-part series. Um, and keep an eye out for the tomorrow where the second part will be coming out and then the day after that the testing chamber will be coming out so make sure to leave a like subscribe hit the bell and in the comments below tell me other games that you might want to see in the near future i know it kind of ends a little abruptly in the middle of the episode but trust me it gets a lot more intense afterwards i love you all have an artful day Bye bye